What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Creepy Crawl. Hope everyone is doing well today. Got a couple requests to show my process on making 3D printed things not look printed. In this case, make it look like a beat up piece of armor. So we're gonna head to Lowe's. I have my main color, the cream color, I guess you would call it. I don't even know what color it is. We'll look at it here in a minute. Uh, but because I know it'll get discontinued before I'm done with my kit, I bought a case of it. So we got plenty of that. What I need is the forged metal. I also need some filler primer. And we're also gonna get the stuff called uh, spot glazing putty. So I'm gonna head over to Lowe's and if they don't have the glazing putty there, which I'm 50-50 on, I'm pretty sure they will, but if they don't, I'm gonna to go to a Savers anyway afterwards, a thrift store, and there's an auto zone right next door and they'll have plenty. Well, looks like they do have it. 10 bucks, a little expensive, but I'm not stopping twice if I don't have to. I'm definitely grabbing two of these. So this is where I get my metal. Um, it's a forged hammered pewter. <laughs> but they don't seem to have it anymore, so. And that's the closest I'm gonna get to it. I'm just gonna grab it. So they didn't have the hammer forged pewter that I normally use, but I wanna go to a thrift store anyway, and I have to go up north to come back home anyway, and there's a Home Depot between here and there. I still got that one Rust-Oleum uh, as a backup, but if Home Depot has it, I'll just return this one. But either way, we're gonna go with it. <laughs> so now it's time to get working on the pieces. I'm not so much worried primarily about the print lines themselves. We are gonna knock them back with a little bit of 220. I'm gonna hit both pieces with 220 grit before we do anything. Um, but just to give you a little bit of a heads up before we get into the actual processes, um, I'm more worried about stuff like this. And it's just the little things that that just come along with 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 filament printers. Uh, there's really not much you can do to avoid it, and it's really not that big a deal. That's where a lot of uh, glazing spot putty is going to come in. First and foremost, before anything, let's hit the entire thing front, back, edges, everything with some 220 and get it ready to accept all this junk we're going to put on it. So, I mean, we're about done with the first one. I didn't really do too much. I actually moved over the 120. Um, not for any other reason than I just thought it would help with the edges. Be careful around the edges because if you sand here too much or in the wrong direction, um, and that's going to depend on which, you know, your print, um, you, you run the risk of actually starting to peel the layers. So be very careful in that, especially pay attention to which way the layers were laid down because if you're doing this too much, you're going to start, you get it. Obviously, you're going to have to get hands-on with it. Don't put too much pressure on it. Just let the sandpaper do the work. You don't need to get too much material off of here. You're literally just knocking it down a little bit, um, trying to get a visual of any trouble spots. If there were any on the face of this, uh, they would start showing up now if there were any dimples or, you know, sometimes there's like little, uh, I guess you'd call them pimples, <laughs> little uh, PLA pimples on the thing. This will help expose those um, but you're really right now just, just trying to get the, the surface ready for again the stuff that we're going to put on it and you, I, you don't want to put too much pressure just just let the paper do the work and um that's really it just be careful around the edges give it just one good go around it shouldn't take you a couple minutes i'm going to do the other one and then we'll move on to my next step so now i'm going to hit a lot of trouble spots with a layer of glazing putty. Um, this isn't necessarily to fill anything, and you'll see here why in a minute. I, again, right now, this whole process that we're doing now is about exposing any potential problems. So I'm mainly gonna hit the edges around, you know, the, the larger stuff with this. This is not meant to actually fill in gaps. It's meant to find pinholes and stuff like that, and just, you know, almost like a finishing product. So uh, we're not gonna use this to actually fill anything more so smooth things out. I hope that makes sense. But let me do that. Use gloves and make sure you're in a well-ventilated place. This is not only stinky, it's flammable. And I'm pretty sure you don't want this on your fingers. However, that's what I do. I use my fingers. So. But don't do as I do. Do as I say. And you'll live a happy long life. And it looks a little something like this. Sloppy. That's okay. 
We're gonna lightly sand it back once it's completely dry, and that's the great stuff about the great thing about this stuff here. It doesn't take about a half hour or so to be completely dry when you put it on nice and thick like this. Uh, lightly sand. We're not trying to remove the material, just kind of like the top layer of it. And then I'm going to drown it in primer. That's from where I wiped my finger off. <laughs> it's not for any other reason than that. So far, so good. This is my first go around. Um, you can see some problem spots that are going to be here in the corner. That's really, that's really about it. Really about it. So I just got to clean the parts. Maybe sand just a little bit more in this corner. And then I'm going to hit it very heavy with uh, filler primer, 2 in 1, whatever you want to call it. Automotive primer. Uh, literally layering all this stuff up until we get to a nice smooth finish. Uh, a lot of sanding and a lot of repeating the same process over and over again. I'll throw three or four really wet coats all at once. <laughs> so I'm going to put a box over them, let them dry, come out, give it a couple more. And then we'll look for the true uh, trouble spots. About two or three more quick coats. Getting there. So now that the uh, primer is drying, you can kind of see where we're going with this. It's not perfect. I mean, you can still see some of the print lines, but for the most part, <clears throat> this stuff here is taken care of. I'm still gonna have to touch it up. I thought it was gonna fall, so I grabbed it. <laughs> I have to fix that too, that's an easy fix. But now if you weren't doing a textured paint job like me, you'd want to sand this back hit it again, sand it back, hit it again, and then maybe wet sand or get at least to four or 500 grit before starting your uh, your actual finish work, so to speak. Um, whereas I'm using a textured hammered paint, I could probably sand this back once, hit it with one more coat of primer, and then start going with my metallic finish before even putting my, say the main coat, the uh, cream color. I'll show you what that one is when we get to it. So uh, I'm gonna let you just completely dry overnight. All right, everybody, so it's the next morning. I just coughed. <laughs> I'm so horrible at this. Um, there's that one spot where I touched it, remember? Yeah, I, it was probably 20 seconds ago to you, but... <laughs> uh, yes, we will be doing the same stuff to the inside. Don't you worry. Don't you worry, just not to the same degree, because they will be hidden. Um, but I've already hit it with a little bit of 220, and uh, we're just going to just give it one more pass. With this stuff, I'm also working on my Frankenfein skull mask. Might as well hit that with some primer too. We're almost ready for finish, so it really doesn't take a lot. Uh, if you, uh, also, if you look, if you look down here, I mean, there's still some trouble spots right here. But for the most part, for the most part, the filler primer takes care of a lot more than you would think it does. But um, it, now, again, if I was going for a fresh, brand new look, obviously this would not be acceptable. Uh, but since I'm going to be using a textured paint, it's going to be all hidden underneath all that. So uh, I am going to smooth it out the best I can, give it a couple more layers, maybe get rid of more stuff like that. And then we're going to move on to the actual finish itself. where I'm going to leave you this morning. Um, we're going to continue on it, and I will do a part two. Uh, the only the only things we need to do now is maybe hit it with some 220, maybe even 400, just to smooth it out, clean it off with a little bit of, you know, alcohol and a dust-free rag. And I have a microfiber cloth over here ready to also assist in the cleaning of the thing. And then we get to put the undercoat, the metallic coat on, mask it off, and then hit it with the top coat, or the, the main color, I should say. It's not technically a top coat, but we're not putting any kind of clear on top of any of this. So that's for the next video. I hope you're excited. It is going to take at least about a week or so for the metallic coat to truly cure. Not dry. I'll be able to touch it by the end of the day. But it still has to gas off. And if you don't allow these metallic coats to do that, you tend to screw them up and then they dull out a little bit more than they normally would. So 
We'll get to all that in the next video. Hope you're gonna be excited in anticipation for it. I know I am, even though I'm literally going to be doing that stuff here in about 30 seconds. So guys, go ahead and leave your feedback. Thumbs up, thumbs down, all feedback too. The creep is positive. Thank you all so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Please do. I really want to grow this channel. I hope everyone who's watching this is doing well. And until next time, take care, creep it real, and bye bye